Friends, welcome to your home or starter group. I'm gonna go ahead and have the facilitators uh, open the icebreaker questions up. Go ahead and get some good discussion going before we jump into the sermon recap. Friends, this past week we talked out of the book of Ephesians. And um, as we get going with this, uh, what we really centered on this week was hope. Uh, the text for this week is Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. And I'm going to have you go ahead and pause this right now and read that scripture. You may notice like, oh, that's the same as the scripture that was on our sheet last week. I need to confess uh, there was a mistake on those. We were supposed to have last week's scripture on the, the sheets. We just got a little bit mixed up. It was some confusion on our end. So please forgive me if it made discussion hard in your small groups um, for that. But hopefully uh, this week we'll click it into gear. Everything's set up. We've got the content right. And thank you for being gracious with us. Go ahead, open your scriptures and uh, read that in your small group. And we'll be right back to talk about the sermon. So what we have in this part of Ephesians is the Apostle Paul really naming out some identity things. And we talk about that really clearly today. And the way we do it is kind of this two-handed version. What I would like to do is explain what hope is by explaining what hopelessness is. So what is it to be hope to experience hopelessness? So in this, um, if you, well, hopelessness leads to a few different things. First of all, it leads to a uh, a lack of purpose. You have no sense of purpose if you're hopeless. You have no no future. There's nothing out ahead of you if you're hopeless because there's just no purpose or future to live for. There's, there's this sense of helplessness going on in your life when you're hopeless. So um, it feels like life is a tide and it's just washing over you and all the effort you marshal to push back doesn't even matter. It's just helpless. You keep getting run over by life if you're hopeless. And then finally, there's this feeling of isolation, aloneness. When you're hopeless, you kind of pull back and retreat into not necessarily just yourself, but what you do is you end up retreating back into this place of complete isolation because you're hopeless, you're purposeless, you, you find no sense of you're helpless against all the things in life. So we look at that and we're like, oh my goodness, um, like how sad does that sound? But many of us live there. And in Ephesians, what we recognize, and, and we, we said it this way in this sermon, hopelessness comes when the eyes of the heart are blinded and you can't see a way out. Hopelessness comes when you no longer see or have hope. So if that's hopelessness, Hopelessness being where there's not even a dream in your heart for what's next. What's hope look like? Well, hope is leads to things too. Just as hopelessness led to certain things, hope leads to certain things. The first thing we recognize is hope in Christ leads to a sense of calling. And calling, when you compare that with purpose, like not having purpose, hopelessness, is not having purpose. A calling means that your life presently has great purpose. You have purpose in the kingdom of God and for the mission of Christ. The next thing we know is hope means you have an inheritance. We have an inheritance of hope in, uh, we have the hope of an inheritance in Christ that this life presently is very purposeful, but also into the future and on into eternity, there is great, um, there's a great inheritance waiting for us. And so we live forward with the, the belief and the faith that our future is secure. And remember with hopelessness, our future was absent. With hope, we have a future with an inheritance and it goes on into eternity. The next thing we recognize is with hope, there's a sense of power. Remember, hopelessness had a sense of being helpless. Hope allows us to have a sense of power. Remember, um, if you weren't at church, uh, we sang the song by Jeremy Camp, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power, you know, like that it lives in us. It lives deep within us, that same power. With the hope of Christ, we have a power, the Holy Spirit within us, and it's helping us and guiding us along the way. We're not helpless 
what we are is hopeful that the power of Christ is going to be lived through us and help us overcome circumstances and different things. And finally, the last thing hope gives us is Christ as our leader. And as a pastor, I'm so thankful for that. Um, I'm so thankful that, you know, when I make mistakes, it's not all up to me, right? It's up to Jesus. He's the leader. We're all following him. It's not about a pastor. It's not about a person. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's our leader. Remember, helplessness said you were alone. Hope or hopelessness says that you're alone in the end. Hope in Christ says that you're never alone because you're following your leader, Jesus Christ, and the community of faith walks with you in that. So you have these things, but then you kind of have to ask the question like, you know, how does this happen? How do I get this hope? Well, we recognize hope is revealed in Christ, but we must know him if we are going to experience that hope and see that hope. So really our application for this week was, Know the Lord Jesus Christ. Know him and remember that that's what Paul was saying in Ephesians when Paul said this. Verse 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him better, that you may know Jesus better. So what we know of someone is what you see of them. So when you see, if you know something about a person, you kind of see that in them. Here's what we know of God the Father. In the book of Jeremiah, back in the Old Testament, God says this through his prophet, but let the one who boasts, boast about this, that they have understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. And what we recognize in that is that God God is displaying to us his kindness, his justice, and his righteousness. In his kindness, he gave us Christ to redeem us. In his justice, Christ died for our sins and, and held our punishment. And then finally, what we recognize is in his righteousness, we become the righteousness of God and we bring the kingdom to bear on the world around us. So the application for this week was quite simple. Know him. Know the Lord Jesus Christ. Experience him and understand that in knowing him, you have a relationship that brings him into focus for people around you and gives hope to the world around you. Erica and I met on Mercy Ships and um, we only knew each other for 11 weeks before, oh, well, well, we knew each other for six months, but we were on the same location for 11 weeks before we got uh, engaged which doesn't seem like enough time looking back, but it was. And one of the reasons was during our times apart, which were significant, we would email each other all the time. And when we had phone cards, we would, we would call each other and we would talk. And what ended up happening was um, through our words and through our letters and like our bonding, we were really falling in love while we wrote letters to one another, emails back and forth and phone calls that we could have you know, back and forth. It really is a good parallel for the church nowadays, right? Um, our emails were like the word to us. That's how we read and saw what they were thinking and feeling. Our phone calls were for us, they were, they were that relationship and we got to know each other on those phone calls better and better. We started liking things the other person liked. Eric liked. Erica became a Broncos fan. The Broncos were in the Super Bowl. She wasn't a bandwagon fan. She loved me. So she started being interested in what I was interested in. Here's how this applies. In the same way that we fell in love, though we didn't have a lot of time together, you can fall in love with Christ. For us, it was emails, but for you, it's scripture. God has written you a beautiful love letter. It's called the Bible. And we invite you to get into the Bible and really read about how God loves you and how God's for you in this life. Also, there's prayer. Prayers are like those phone calls. Though you're far away, you can talk and you can hear from him what he loves and what he desires and you can obey that. My friends, I'm excited for you to engage in this life filled with hope that Christ indeed is enough. He is your righteousness and he is calling you into a life that brings hope into this world. We'll have some discussion questions for you next.
So we have some discussion questions for you. And uh, forgive me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my cheat sheet so I make sure I say them right. So our first question for you is this. Does any one of you have an example of a time when you felt blinded by a sense of hopelessness? So do you have a time in your life where you felt completely blinded by the sense of hopelessness that you experienced? If you do, why don't you share with your group and explain what that was like? Next question. How can a loss of hope lead to a sense of purposelessness? So how can a loss of hope lead to a sense of having no purpose? How can a loss of hope lead you to feel like there's no future? How can a loss of hope lead you to feel like you're completely helpless in this life? How can a loss of hope make you feel isolated and alone? Hope, on the other hand, has a different reality altogether. You see, hope leads to a totally different response. How has hope in Christ given you a sense of calling? Why do you think that, it, that your calling and your purpose matter so much in your life? Why does it matter to you? Does knowing that you have an inheritance in Christ give you peace about your future? Even though there's some things that are unknown, does that give you peace, knowing you have an inheritance in Christ? Is it easier for you to trust God with eternity than it is for you to trust God with today or tomorrow? We sing the song, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. You want me to sing it? You want me to sing it? <clears throat> no. Um, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us, right? We, we sing that song, we say that. Do you realize that? Have you ever thought about that truth? That the same power that raised the Son of God from, the, his, from death lives in you. The hard part is, more than realizing it, do you believe that that same power lives in you? How could that understanding about the same power that raised Christ from the dead living in you help you face uncertain times with more confidence in the future. Let me read it this way. How could the understanding of Christ and his power living in you affect you the next time you're facing a situation that would normally leave you hopeless? All right, um, I'm going to reread verse 22. All right. Verse 22 of Ephesians chapter one says this, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. So last week we learned that we as the church, we were chosen, we were adopted, we were sealed with the promised, promised Holy Spirit and, and we live and we live differently, right? We're redeemed and we're forgiven in Christ. Um, do you realize that the church isn't a building? This church could burn down tomorrow. I mean, I hope it doesn't. But in the end, this church building could burn down because this isn't the church. You are. I am. We are the church, not a building. Who, according to the scriptures, is the head of the church and why? Let me ask you a question that I want you to ask around your group. Paul declares the hope that is for believers in Ephesians. But how do we find it? Talk amongst yourselves. See what the answer is to how you find this hope. Do 
do me a favor. Have somebody in your group reread Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18. And we'll be back with a question. Look at both instances of the word no, K-N-O-W, in those scriptures. What is the first thing we must know in order to know hope? What is the difference between knowing about someone and actually knowing someone? What are some of the ways you can know about Jesus Christ? And what are some of the ways you can know Jesus Christ? Facilitators, I invite you to um, uh, go ahead and wrap up your discussions with a time of sharing prayer requests. Uh, if anybody has any prayer requests, I would love to know that you guys would hold those together, pray for your group, and um, spend some time as a group in prayer for one another. Uh, these groups are supposed to connect us to the life of the body, and sometimes the body hurts, so it's good to hold those things up to um, one another and then hold them up to God. And also, if there were any prayer requests shared last week, I would love to have you uh, check in on one another and see how you're doing. Uh, my friends... It's been wonderful. Don't forget to be doing the devotions that come with this during the week. They'll really help you connect to the sermon and connect with the idea and the content and then in real life in your small groups connect. So devotions, Sundays, sermon-based small groups is gonna be great. Have a good night.